What's good, y'all? What's good, y'all? It's it's never it's, well, it's, I slide it. It's exactly where I want it to be. It's like that's always in a certain space. Yeah. Um, what's going on, y'all, man? So I wanted to um follow up. I don't know if the order how I'm gonna do this video, but we do. We did a video talking about um where the world is going, and it seems to be starting from the education system. But also, but this video I want to talk about the slaveries that's coming from opioid. Uh, this is like a this is a slavery, man. A lot of people are passing from fentanyl and all this stuff like this, and it's you know. So I want to look at this video regarding this um, this and it, epidemic. And it's also the kids. There was something out that was out recently about whatever the drug was. It was targeting, you know, young people and these young. Did you know they had they've been people put? Were, people are saying they were. Um, it's been some people. There were people that have gotten sick and died from edibles because it was fentanyl put into the edibles. Mm -mm. And yep. Whoa. So it's at High America got hooked on opioid, the war on drugs. Let's go. 2018 alone, over 67,000 were killed by drug overdoses. In 2017, it was over 70,000. In 2016, over 63,000. The war on drugs is a Vietnam war every year. Narrowed it down to literally two overdoses a month. And the rate I'm going, I may not see 32. But how did we get here? 32. Oh my God, he looks. 32. He, he looks 46. Yeah, he does. Yo, he looks really old. I did. You or do, he, much older than 32. He did not look like somebody that just recently came out of their 20s. Wow. Get us to a place where overdoses now kill more Americans than gunshots or road accidents. Really? Wow. Did not know that. Pharmaceutical companies began sending sales reps across the U.S. and Canada aggressively marketing much stronger opioid pain medication to doctors. Wow. The market leaders in this, though by no means the only ones at it, were Purdue Pharma, pushing their shiny new pill, OxyContin. Prescriptions for OxyContin increased from 670,000 to 6.2 million. Wow. He look like he just going through it. Yeah, like he's been through it. And it's such a shame that the person that started this horrible, you know, addiction for him did that because he look how young he is no you know who started the, the addiction was the 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 medical companies right so i said the practitioner the one that prescribed the medicine I'm to talking about him the, the, i'm talking about the sales people that, that like, make it and sold it to uh, them true but if it was something that was used for pain and that had already been on the market the pharmaceuticals push push but it increased but the the doctor can say well no i'm not going to try this or I'm going to keep it at this. The pharmaceuticals can push it, but they don't have to accept it and prescribe it to their patients. Yeah. Because I'm going to let you know whether I'm going to take it or not anyway. I'm always going to come with a natural source. I feel like some people are, are but, pre, what's the word, predisposed to, to being able to take, to get addicted to stuff. Because you could, I could be in the same case. You start giving me that stuff. I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't like how this, I don't want this all in me. Well, we do, you know? many of us, you know, we all have predispositions, yet you're still the final factor in making the decision of to not allow the environment to increase the likelihood of you getting addicted or whatever your predisposition thing is, yeah. you're still the one that's gonna determine on whether or not you fall into that thing. Yeah. It gives me 7.5s and some Dilaudid. By the time opioid prescribing peaks I'm in- Real quick, that Dilaudid is you're not you're not supposed to have a prescription for it because when I had the surgery, the emergency. Uh huh. Yeah, that surgery. Yeah, that's what they were giving me, and I was like, okay, no, I want some of that, and they were like, no, we can't prescribe that. And I was like, okay, it's like because it's highly addictive, obviously. That obviously. pain where you be where where you be feeling and how you are so removed from any pain, you are so relaxed and so chill. It shut off. It shut off them pain like nerves. Zippo. And you get a, 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 an elated feeling with it. Oh, hey. <laughs> Back in 2010, authorities began cracking down on doctors in Florida who'd been overprescribing opioids. See? So, millions of people who'd become dependent on these medicines were suddenly cut off by their doctors. And this is where the true opioid crisis really begins. Mm. The greatest myth of the opioid epidemic is that the whole thing was caused by overprescribing. Mm -hmm. But it's not a true crisis until you add the war on drugs. Those addicted patients didn't just stop needing the drugs because their prescriptions ran out. So millions of them turned to the black market and started buying heroin. Mm. Inevitably, some of those users started dying. Of anything, so it's this just say no mentality. 
Just say no. Just say no. Just say no. That was terrible. Just say no. But let me say this real quick. Just say so, no. And so what is the root cause is what needs to be addressed and healed. Yes. Because you're taking the medications for something. Okay, so now the pain is over, but psychologically there's some pain somewhere else if you still feel the need to want to numb out on the pain pill. So the root of what the medicine is, is requiring was making you take it for that thing. That need, that's what needs to be treated, not more prescriptions. But how do you get to the root? Counseling, therapy. Naloxone or Narcan is a drug that can save people from an opiate overdose almost instantly. It's like magic. I mean, it's, it's essentially like it's bringing someone back to life and giving them another chance, saving the lives of people who deserve a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chance. Knock. I don't want to live like this. This is terrible. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid around 50 times stronger than heroin. Two milligrams can be 50 times stronger than heroin. That's why the, you keep hearing about people are dying so quickly because it's double the strength. Exactly. And I was going to say another way that this can be combated is people have to be willing to do the self work, not just counseling and therapy. Yeah. Many people heal and don't have counseling and therapy because they do self healing. They learn how to pray. They do um, different forms of meditation. They exercise. They work out and they start to work on their mind because that's where it starts. It starts in the mind first. So I just want to say that because not everyone may have needed to, to go to counseling and therapy or chose that as a form of solution for them to come up. Yeah, but your mind has to be strong to say, I'm going to get up and start meditating. That's a stronger mind. It's the will of the person. It's the will. Everybody has the same innate will inside of them. God had put the same will inside of us. Mm. Everybody has that will. That's how a kid who's in a horrible home situation can thrive and overcome the odds because they have the will to get out and they got that one person that they talking to. Same I, thing. I got it. I mean, I, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, but you know, but, um, but, that's just how but I, I believe that's out. a small percentage that has that will to fight through it. Gotcha. If you're a drug trafficker, you can move a million doses of fentanyl in a shoebox. Yo. It's fentanyl and other ultra-powerful synthetic opioids That's that have triggered the astronomical spike in overdose deaths across North America. From 2015 to 2017, we've tripled our fentanyl seizures across the country. The DEA sees 193 kilos of fentanyl. That's enough to kill the city's entire population 11 times over. Dang. And it just gets scarier. The explosion of fentanyl has been followed by an influx of car fentanyl, which is a hundred times stronger. In that one gram, that's actually 50,000 fatal overdoses. 50,000, that, that's a city. So where does that leave us? Deaths are expected to break 70,000 this year. Wow. Purdue Pharma is being sued by over 2,000 American cities, counties, and Native American territories for its part in creating the crisis. Purdue have reportedly offered to settle those cases, and in 2019, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Mm, but that's a small it. consolation for the victims of this battle in the war on drugs. Every 15 minutes, a baby is born in America addicted to opioids. Every day, 128 Americans die of an opioid overdose. Experts project opioids will kill over half a million people in the US over the next decade. Really? That's about one in every 600 of the population. Unless there's a radical change of policy, this is likely to get worse before it gets better. Mm. We'd like to congratulate drugs for winning the war on drugs. Wow. Yeah, that's horrible, man. I just man. learned a lot that's, of now information. That, the slavery y'all want to um, really hone in on is that one. Yeah. Because... They're starting to, they've started to put that stuff in stuff, and you don't even know that it's put into the things, something that you may be ingesting. Wow, that's scary. He said a gram. You can, that, and that's, that'd 50, be like 50, an overdose. 50,000, I know. So that's crazy. That's crazy. He said, they said they can move all this product in a shoebox. 
Whereas it'd been like with heroin, they just having a shoebox. You would never know it being a shoebox, and then they making probably millions off that, and then so many you already know in that box, so many people gonna die out of that box. That's crazy. I don't. Well, I, I think, don't, man, I, I honestly understand. think I think drug movement is so played. I'm not even gonna lie, man. It's a terrible thing, you know. God, God does not like that, but I think it's so played. People that people still hustling drugs. You know, That's they, so played. They don't, they're not, they don't care about anybody but themselves. They, they don't care about, you know, a life, a, another human. Because if so, they wouldn't even be pushing it out there. They wouldn't be doing that. And just the mere fact of not addressing the real issue. Now, I understand that there are medications that are relative to, to fight off certain diseases. I get that. And there are also medicines that help with addictions. I get that, too. And we need stuff for pain, most definitely. But when something is abused over an extended amount of time, you know, use, abuse, there's a deeper problem that needs to be addressed. And that just, not just opioids, alcohol, whatever a vice is that you're all, using as all, a coping mechanism and it's not helping. It could even be caffeine. Y'all know I love my coffee. But the thing is. Caffeine and then people it don't doesn't, know. You, you start going too crazy on caffeine. Next thing you have an um, AFib, you know, so you want to be mindful about making that heart do too much but there's research i just sent you a letter and i just sent you an article about how they said a person if you drinking three cups of coffee a day that's may, a natural caffeine source. may reduce people who have high blood pressures risk of increasing the blood pressure even though other research supports that drinking coffee could raise your blood pressure they don't recommend this for people who have high higher if you're in that really high um high risk high blood pressure range zone they don't you know recommend it for you but people who are at a lower end of the spectrum with high blood pressure three cups of coffee a day could actually lower it and they're talking about some but, type but of, of coffee uh, not energy drinks right and it's that's something synthetic that's, let me tell you i sent myself to the hospital because i used to smash energy drinks all the time but it's something in the coffee that um some antioxidant biome or whatever is, is supposed to help reduce it it's that particular thing and in the ingredient in the coffee bean or whatever i was trying to say that but anyway that's what i want to bring to you our new sponsor no, I'm just, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah but. i just wanted to say this was really really good you know and it just helps open your eye to how you know how things are in our in our country and how it still takes each individual to take responsibility and want to make a change now when you've already changed some things biologically due to the drugs you're gonna re- you're gonna need some extra support, so reach out to resources to get the extra support that you need. If and you I don't, think, if you can't do it by yourself, I think that's the biggest thing that might be lacking right there, like because you want to get off but you don't know where to go, so you find yourself back in the same system doing the same thing. Or you need so someone you need to help, help you. you need yeah, the encourage me. Help. Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. That was good though. Okay. Man, like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose dive and comment down the section below. We appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Love you guys. Bye.